want your shitty logo to reveal in this cool way? It is really easy to make. Every beginner can just follow me and learn this cool technique of revealing your logo. First, let's see how can you make your own logo in Blender and then apply that effect. What I'm gonna do is import a SVG from here which is scalable vector graphics. For those who don't know how to get a SVG file for their logo, it's an easy step. Get a PNG of your logo and then go to the site png2 svg and you will see the first site which will be a png2svg.com drag and drop your file and convert it if you go to the file and click on import and then go to scalable vector graphics just select your svg file and import and i've got my logo here what we have to do is in the object data properties we'll go to the geometries and extrude it a little if you are selecting all and you try to extrude only one extrude but if you press alt and then try to extrude all will extrude at once after that selecting your logo and right click and convert to mesh now the problem is if i see it in a wireframe mode this mesh has a very very bad topology so to fix that go to the modifier and apply modifier which will be a remesh reduce the voxel size slowly 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 until you start seeing your logo again after that we will apply modifier which will be a bevel so what we gotta do is change the method for remesh to sharp now it is way better than before but we gotta tweak some setting change the scale to 0.968 and increase the bevel segment to 2 also change the bevel amount to something like 70 because it will consider those angles which we don't want to bevel now we want to apply the same modifiers to our these two as well so select these two then select our first mesh and press ctrl l and copy modifiers now we have the logo let's start with making the effect first i'm only gonna need the lower part we will use these later select them and press h to hide them now selecting our this logo we will add another modifier on this which will be a geometry node now the geometry node is here but nothing has happened yet so we will go above and click on geometry nodes and we get a different panel layout here you get the option to create a new just select and click on it you will get two nodes the input consists of the data of our mesh like vertices position edges position and our faces position and output just shows us all the data in the viewport our first main objective is to scale the faces so how we will do that we will use a node by pressing shift a which is a scale elements which will allow us to scale like faces edges now if we scale the logo is scaling as a whole we don't want that instead we want every single face on our mesh like this face to scale individually and so on how to achieve that for that there is another node which is called split edges if we apply this one what this will do is split the edges and make the faces individual so now we'll start scaling and you will see the magic happening but this looks not that good because they are all scaling together all coming and going we want the faces start scaling in a linear path to achieve that we will need a plane axis in our scene to drive that animation go to empty and add a plane axis we're gonna basically scale our logo but scale it with others as well selecting our logo only scale it a bit more using this plane axis we will drive that animation for our logo so you have seen a dot in front of the scale we can use this to get that kind of effect what we will need is the position of our logo right here position of our plane axis we want them here first thing we are gonna do is click on this pin icon so that we will pin our geometry nodes here and even after we select anything else the geometry nodes stays there to bring the location of our plan axis right here what we are gonna do is just select the empty right here in our scene collection and drag it from there into our geometry node and it comes as an object info in which the empty is selected and now use another node which will be a position by default it will use the position of our logo now that we have the location of both our object and plane axis in our geometry node we need to find the distance between them 
we will use a node which will be called vector match node with this node we will set the operation to subtract and connect the location to vector and position to vector now we get the distance between them for that effect to arise we will just duplicate this and set its operation to dot product and again connect vector to vector and connect this value to the scale well everything has just disappeared let's just set the object info to relative and set one of the vector value to one now we see something let's increase the value more from one but if we increase too much the mesh is going beyond its boundaries how do we fix that for that we have another node which is called clamp node we connect this between the dot product and the scale now we got a clamp and even if we scale more than one there is no going beyond the boundaries so we would set something to like 3.5 would be good enough we don't want it to start from this direction but from right direction so to switch that we will just set it to minus 3.5 and it will switch the direction voila now if you try to move our plane axis the effect will go with it let's just change the shader to something a new shader set new so that we can see something now try moving it and it looks really good our first main objective is achieved but the second thing what i want is when this is scaling i want some part to be moved up on the axis right here like this one and this one to move right here so that it has a little bit of fall off to achieve that we will use a node which is called set position and just drag it between the set elements and your group output now again how we use a clamp node to limit our effect of the geometry we will use another node for that which is called map range to limit our that effect we will use the dot product value and connect it to the value of map range another two nodes which are important we will need are same we duplicate the vector math node and set the mode to multiply so why we need multiply because we will multiply the value of our map range with a node which is called normal by using this they will move up in the normal direction what we only want now is to move it on the z and on the y axis only because for me i have the y axis and the z axis we don't want it to move on the x we will use a node which is called combine x y z and use the desired axis which is the y and z and connect it to the vector for now let's just set the from minimum to three and to minimum one and to max zero and lastly connect the vector to the offset now we are getting the result but in the wrong direction so to fix that again you know what to do just change the three value to minus three we are almost there just try tweaking these values a little so you get the desired effect so it looks really cool and futuristic that things are like just dropping down and joining in but wait the important thing missing is we only have our lower part of the logo but how to bring our logo part you have guessed right we will just drag and drop our curve right into the scene we can have to do it one by one we can use the joint geometry logo to combine other parts here now just connect the geometry and make sure it's set to relative now they are both here and the effect is working on all of them if you want to change the direction you can change the direction of your revealing also changing the second value that will change the direction of your revealing i would like to set it something like this one final and a finishing effect we can give our logo is add a solidify modifier go into the modifiers tab and add a solidify to it now it's really looking like some bricks are building this logo and it is looking really cool pressing z and go to the render view change from ev to cycles cpu to gpu compute i will add a background which is be a plane rotate it on the x-axis which will be by 90 degree and bring it a little back on our logo i can shift a and add a camera to the scene so right now we cannot pose properly our camera so we will add a light in our scene just add a area light and bring it up it's too powerful now we will just reduce the power by going into object data properties 
and reducing its power a two what is enough now i'll click our camera and from this angle i will press ctrl alt 0 so that the camera is snapped to my viewport so to properly work in this scenario i'm going to change this one to 3d viewport as well but i will keep it at a top angle so i can manage everything from here i will duplicate that light and move it a bit on the background just right there so it flashes our background a lot and i'm going to change its spread so that our object is separated a little bit from our background it's time to apply some material to our object just go to the material and on this principal bsdf change it to class bsdf well nothing is working now why is that because we have to apply materials from within the geometry nodes only so we'll add another node which will be set material and select my material 002 which is a class and i will rename it to class so it changes right here and change the color to something blue let's just reduce the roughness now to shine our object a bit more we are going to duplicate this light and bring it in front and face our logo i think we have to move the background a little bit more back making another duplicate of our light rotate it and place it at uh, this angle that is looking really good now for our background i have a material i have saved and i will provide the link for you as well so you can download it and apply it i will change this to the shader editor and we will bring those texture right here we will just collect the color to the color one more thing i'm gonna do right here is go into the world properties and change the strength to zero so it looks more dramatic now comes the part for the animation we want our logo to spin like this but it will be difficult for to spin the logo because it's responding to our plane axis so instead of rotating our logo we will rotate our whole scene so let's add a circle to our scene what we have to do is just select your lights even the background and even the camera and after you have selected all select your circle and press ctrl p and select an object select your ring and rotate it on z axis the logo is looking like to be rotating but actually what is happening is your scene is rotating let's change this one to a timeline and start animating so selecting the ring which is already selected we'll press i and then press a keyframe on rotation because we are rotating it before going ahead let's just set the end to 160 that should be good enough now we will go to the 50th frame and again press i and click on rotation but we want the zero one to rotate so it's like almost revealing if you move our playhead it is resetted so that doesn't happen press i and click on the rotation now the rotation has finally applied if you seek with the playhead you will see the rotation going on now i want somewhere at the 70th frame to have a total 360 degree rotation i can press r and z to rotate on the z axis and give it a total of a 360 rotation so it comes here and insert and again click on rotation so you don't want this to do every time just click on this button right here auto keying and it will record the animation for you you don't have to always press i and r again and again just like this and we are done with the rotation and with so let's see how it looks well that is looking really good it's time to animate our effect so we'll simply select our plane axis press i and then press on location go in the front view and then as auto keyframe is applied we don't have to worry we'll just move it right here there will be some artifacts like this if you go beyond so don't worry about it just find the perfect angle like this what i would like is to reveal it in a 45 degree angle so how do i do that basically again select the logo change this to geometry node editor and let's change the angle from here after we go to the 50th frame when our scene starts to rotate very very fast i will keep a keyframe right here which is located at this location and then i will just slow down our reveal a little bit because i don't want too much revealing of our logo i want that for the last part when the rotation the fast rotation has finished and after that 
our reveal will continue with a smooth ending. Let's just see it again. So that was all. Make sure to subscribe if you really love this tutorial. If you have any doubt, leave in the comment section. Peace out everyone.